from their perspective, why evolution is a fact. So Bradley, since you're our astronomer, do you want to start with that? Yeah, uh, we touch tangentially on a, on uh, evolution because, you know, once in a while you hear students who don't really, they aren't sure and they're asking about it, um, especially during our life in the universe module, because they want to know whether or not it's likely that we could have life on other planets and, and that would ne necessarily imply evolution is going to be happening on those planets. Um, I don't know a lot about it because it's not my area of specialization. And so when students ask, I normally point them to, um, what was his first name, was Richard, I can't remember, Lenski, L-E-N-S-K-I, at uh, University of Michigan, no, Michigan State, who actually got bacteria to evolve by making them mutate, taking samples over and over and over and watching the mutation, mutated genome, and then eventually got them to the point where they were able to metabolize citrate, which used to be something that would kill the bacteria in the original sequence. So literally, they evolved bacteria from one species of bacteria into another. And they can, and Lenski actually has like this long running experiment that he published, I think in 08, where it's like, here's exactly each intermediary step in the bacteria. So you can actually see the thing evolve into something that didn't used to be able to digest citrate and now can completely eat it. And so in doing so, I tell students, I said, I know that's not the same as me showing you bacteria becoming humans, but at least it opens the door to go, look, I can show clearly this is happening. Like this is not hypothetical. It's not just in the past. We can do it in real time in labs if you want. And that at least provides a jumping off point to go, definitely things are evolving, definitely speciation is occurring. And that normally at least gets students to go, okay, I can see his point, because I can point right at it. I'll pull the article out and go, here you go, you know, and, and that normally slows them down a lot if somebody's doubting it, you know, that normally helps, you know. Yeah. I really, really like that. Yeah, it, it really does confuse people when you, when you talk about um, small, minute changes that happen over and over and over again. And so having just one change that you can see happen is a good way to kind of oh, well, then give they an example that they can wrap their mind. Then Go they ahead. come up with the arbitrary distinction of that's just microevolution, <laughs> right? And then when they talk about yeah. mic macroevolution, uh, Bradley, uh, what I always hear uh, from people who don't want to understand this, I mean, it's not just that they don't understand it, it's because they deliberately don't want to understand this. But uh, Bradley, what a lot of these people tell me is that evolution teaches that everything came from nothing and that somehow ev evolution involves the Big Bang. Ah, yeah. There are so many leaps in logic there that I can't even, I'm like, I'm too <laughs> old to make that many leaps. You know, I can't do that. <laughs> I think, when, I think when people say things like that, they don't realize that evolution at both of these levels relies on the same established mechanisms of evolutionary change. Mutation, migration, gene flow, genetic drift, all of those apply to micro and macro evolution. It's just that we need more time to see these macro changes. So we just need a whole lot of time. 